uh, be accountable for what we're doing. So let's go back to the crisis, the, the external threats, and, and what do you do in, 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 a, in a crisis situation? And I always think, you know, there's, if there is one country we can learn from is the Japanese. After the Second World War, they um, decided to just copy whatever the best model was and just go from there. You know, and the first thing you do if there is a leading example, you copy. So that's what they do. They imitate the most successful model. And for us, it's very, it, it was very clear then, and it's very clear still, there is only one really successful model. There's only one model that dominates the scientific world, and it's the American model. So the model that we adopted was very simple. We're just going to create an American environment with everything, uh, with all the trappings that that, uh, that, that entails. And that, so that had a whole bunch of, of effects within the university. Uh, for one thing, bureaucracy has to change. You know, researchers have to be in charge, not bureaucrats. You know, bureau listen, bureaucrats are, they're, they're useful, they're important, they're, they're honorable, they're smart, they work hard, but at the end of the day, you have to realize the goal is science or teaching. So that, that, that has to be the, the deciding factor at the end of the day. Um, and I think you, the, the leadership of Tilburg University really showed a lot of vision at that time because they, they wholeheartedly um, helped the change, supported the change. Uh, both uh, the rector in particular, I think, Rute Moore and Piet Verheijen, uh, who was the dean at the time, who I think sort of by, by personality you know, likes decentralization because she sort of likes people to, to have freedom and to do what they want. They realized that that had to happen, and they created internal competition, which was pretty unique in the country. Um, and all that then was used to, to improve quality. That then was used to get more students. That then led to more money. And sort of, you know, gradually uh, the situation improved. So it's a combination of the external threats, the external regulatory environment, and then internal leadership to bring about change. And, you know, once again, so going back to what you then see internally, you know, the 9 to 5 place became a 24-hour place. And it wasn't easy. I don't know whether Tom Button has arrived yet, but, you know, I still remember that Tom and I, and um, I think also, also um, Piet van Hey, we went to see the, the College of Amsterdam, the, the, the Board of Governors of the University, to argue that, you know, the, the building had to be open 24 hours a day because that was sort of so unusual within the context at that time. Now it's hard to imagine that, uh, that it was really a hard fight to do that. But, you know, it's one of these things that are important. And then you see, well, showers, bicycles. I, I'm not quite sure what bicycles in, I guess, because I like to bicycle. And I also have skates, but that sort of doesn't make uh, as much sense. Uh, I mean, there is a reason why these small things matter, because small things matter. Quality is a thousand little thing, so small things also matter. You know, you want to have an environment in which people can live and breathe science, and they, they have to do this whenever they feel like it, not necessarily between nine and five, but you know, if they want to uh, Sunday midnight, you know, and they, they, that always has to be, uh, be possible. And the number of seminars went up to, um, you know, 250 or something like that, rather than five or 10. The number of visitors that we had uh, was about 65. So it just generated an enormously lively environment. Uh, and, and another major change, of course, no internal hires. And that's another thing, if you look at the US job market, you don't hire your own PhD students. And, you know, sometimes I think the university would sin against that rule, but pretty much that was done. And it wasn't easy because, you know, people were essentially kicked out of the university after they got a PhD. But, you know, I've talked to many of these people later, and, you know, by and large they would say, yeah, maybe it was a good thing. Um, so, and, and by 2000, I think sort of more than half the faculty members were actually non-Dutch because we were hiring on the international market. So, did it work? Well, you know, once again, coming back to the top 40, sort of by lack of another statistics, the statistic by 1999, Tilburg sort of dominated uh, that, and, it, and, and there were you know, various papers written by people from other countries, sort of looking at the rankings. And I've just quoted two uh, articles here, and they come to pretty similar conclusions based on some of the different methodologies. And essentially, they're saying, you know, within Europe, Tilburg was clearly among the top. You know, whether it was number one or two, or so that, that sort of neither here nor there, but they were definitely uh, had made great strides. So Tilburg sort of moved from the bottom of the heap in the country to you know, the top of, of Europe, which, by the way, you know, before you think that's great, that's not the world top, okay, because there is still the U.S., and the U.S. is still way above that. So, you know, don't, don't get excited too much, okay. And so a couple of things happened. So bureaucracy came back. I mean, that's something you can maybe, can maybe not see from the outside, but I've sort of experienced that. It was actually one of the reasons why I left. At some point, things changed, and I was just very unhappy with the fact that 
it seemed as if research wasn't, or, or, or education wasn't sort of the primary decider anymore. Other things came into play, and I didn't really think it was so great. And Sender got integrated into the university, and I have, as you can see, I highlighted it and put quotation marks around it because you know, integration has good and bad things. Um, one of the things that, you know, at, at the time sort of uh, gave me some uh, uh, bad feelings was the fact that we had, we had built up an endowment of a couple of million euros, and, you know, that also got integrated, if you like. So. Um, and, and, but I'll come back to that also. And I, and I think partly uh, at that time it wasn't good. At that time it was too early. And one of the things it led to that, that some people left, and some of the absolute most prominent researchers we have, including one who is now at the University of Chicago, left because he was unhappy with uh, where he was. So uh, this, actually, this I got from the latest uh, center uh, annual report. And I talked about visitors earlier and how important they are. And you do see something that, that you know, is not so great. You do see that, that the activity, the, the, the dynamism, if you like, clearly decreased. And, and sort of the number of visitors was cut by about, in, in about half. And that, no matter what else, that's not good. You know, it's not good because it just means that there is less interaction, there's less exposure, and less, less visibility. However, you also see that around 2004, the number is creeping up again. And now I'm going to do sort of super uh, casual econometrics because I'm going to draw inference on the basis of one observation. Um, of course, many things happened in 2004, but one of the things that happened in 2004 around that time is that uh, Lance Bovenberg um, won uh, a prize and rather than using it for his own little research group, what typically always everyone did who won that prize, Lance decided to multiply it by 10, as he put it, and maybe multiply it by 20 now. He sort of forgot this. <laughs> right, he's nodding. So. And, you know, and build Netspar. Uh, and not, you know, of course, not just by himself. I think someone like Theo Neyman and many others, many others have worked really hard to make it a success. And it's an example of a new, new impulse, which, which really, I think, is changing the scene again. And it's really sort of helping the university to, uh, to get better. And, I'll, and I'll, at the end of, I'm almost done, I'll, I'll 